Hi everyone, I'm Kate Sylvia. Today I'm just going to go over a few common photo editing mistakes that photographers make and try and provide you with some solutions. One of them uh, that you may not notice unless you look very, very closely at an image is called chromatic aberration. I'm not going to get into the details of how it happens. Uh, it has to do with your lens. And at first glance, this image doesn't necessarily look like it has anything wrong with it, but let's take a closer look. And when I say closer, I mean really close because sometimes you don't notice this even at 100 or 200% uh, until you go and you make a print and then all of a sudden you see it. And that is right here. Do you see this green kind of teal line here and this red one right here? That's called chromatic aberration. It shows up primarily in very high contrast areas. So you'll see it uh, around the edges of leaves and trees uh, with a bright sky background. Right here, it's along this fence line where you have snow in the background, which we almost never see in Charleston. So this is a rarity. Uh, and it's a very simple and quick fix in Lightroom. I have it set up so that when I import my images into Lightroom, that this automatically gets taken care of. Now, it didn't get rid of it 100%, but simply clicking on this little button right here makes a huge difference and is probably enough for most situations. I mean, clearly this is very, very pixelated. If I move out just a little bit, I may not notice it as much, but I do right there. There's some green and there's some red. So I might come in here and deal with this manually. So what I did there is I increased the amount of the defringing. Now you notice that it actually takes some of the color out of my photo. So I'm not going to go crazy with the amount, but what I did do is I changed these sliders and notice when I change the purple one and drag it all the way over that all of those purples disappear. And the same thing happened with the green. So that's just one of those things that I want you to watch out for, especially if you plan on making a print out of this, because that's the last thing you need is to spend the money and the time on making a quality print. And sure enough, it just shows up right there and stares you right in the face. Okay, so I'm going to take this image, which is a raw photo, and bring it into the develop module and do some really horrible things to it. This happens a lot, I've noticed, when you are dealing with a high contrast situation. Now this image, I took a, a metered exposure, an underexposed, and an overexposed so that I could create an HDR if I wanted to. Now you don't always have to. With this image, looking at the histogram, I probably don't need to. So one of the common problems that I see is a lack of contrast. So if you get an image that looks like this and you have, now I've got some highlights here but I'm not going to worry about those because when I stare into the sun, I don't see any detail. Okay, I really don't stare into the sun, but when I do happen to glance at the sun, I don't see any detail, and so I don't care if there's no detail in this image because it's more realistic that way. But one of the things I see is simply not enough contrast. Adding a little bit of contrast will help bring out some saturation in the colors. You will notice that. However, Grabbing the contrast slider is not something that I typically will just go for. I like to do the shadows and the highlights, but what I really love doing is bringing my blacks down to add contrast. So here is a before and after. You can see how adjusting the midtones and the blacks, highlights and the shadows, brought out a little bit more detail in here. Didn't ruin my sky detail. Let's reset that because if I just grab exposure or just grab contrast, it, it doesn't help me at all. So I actually like to bring up my shadows a little bit to give them a little bit more detail, but bring down the blacks. I know it sounds a little counterintuitive, but it's very effective. Let's reset that. So that's not enough contrast. Clearly, this is too much contrast. Adding so much that you've completely blocked out all of your shadows, blown out your highlights, Let's just avoid that, shall we? So let's bring this image about to where I would like it. So again, a little bit of shadows, but bring back those blacks. Not really gonna boost the overall exposure because I really don't want to affect that sky specifically. Okay, so here's a little bit before and after. It gives it just a little bit of a punch. I like it. 
So here's one thing that I have noticed that is very common uh, on, on social media at least is the overuse of the saturation slider. Saturation is really heavy handed. So if I drag that a little bit and it's not even, I mean, that's 100%, that's heinous, but even at 30, 40%, you can see what is happening to my oranges uh, in here and the transition of color. It's just, it, it's no longer smooth. It's getting blocky, especially, especially right in here. Oversaturation, very easy to do with this slider. And you'll notice it's actually changing my colors quite a bit. Look at what it did right here. Ugh. Don't fall into that trap. Vibrance is a good one if you want to boost the colors a little bit, but not be so heavy handed with it. Vibrance is a good way to do that. Personally, I like to come down to the hue, saturation, and luminance and mess with the individual colors. So I might take blue and aqua and make them a little bit darker. See what that does to my sky. When I darken it, it actually saturates it just a little bit. So affecting the luminance of it has a little side effect of affecting the saturation. Now, when this D Haze slider came out, it was the talk of the town in the Lightroom world. But I will tell you, uh, it, it can be very easily overused. So let's bring let's bring vibrance down back down a little bit, and let's just assume that we have only made just a couple small adjustments. And you want to bring up that color. Now, it adds a lot of contrast. You can smooth things out, make things more contrasty. So be careful with this. And one thing that I have noticed with the dehaze slider, and I'm going to drag it all the way out so you can really see, it will take what should be blue and it will turn it more kind of a greenish blue, more cyan. And so I tend to be very careful when it comes to dehaze. I might do a little bit of overall dehaze, but then I will come in and specifically brush dehaze into specific areas and pretty much leave it out of my sky because I really don't want it uh, to affect the blues in my sky. All right, so I'm going to select these three images and I'm going to create an HDR. Okay, so here is the HDR that Lightroom created. It did a pretty good job, but say this is the image that I wanted to go ahead and, and play with. So let's do some basic adjustments, a little bit of dehaze, add some vibrance. But here's what I see happening quite often with an HDR is that you have so much more flexibility with your your exposure, your shadows, because I mean, I can make this completely dark or completely white. That's what the beauty of HDR. What I've seen some people do with, with an HDR is they get really excited about the whole flexibility of having all of these tonal values to work with, and they make their sky very dark and their foreground very, very bright. I say, oh, I want all of this detail in the foreground that I have now. Look at all that shadow detail I have, and it looks really great. And they may even push the saturation too far. So when I see this online, that to me screams overcooked HDR. And it's basically taking what should be a brighter sky in a darker foreground and reversing it. Suddenly you have a darker sky and a brighter foreground, which when you're standing out there staring into the sunset, please don't look directly at the sun. I have not yet seen a situation where the sky is actually darker than the foreground if the sun is out as it's setting. Typically the foreground is darker than the sky. So when you reverse that, with an HDR, with an overcooked HDR, just because you have that flexibility doesn't mean you should go that far. Let's just whew, start that over again. So here's basically what I would do with an HDR. Yes, I would bring up my shadows quite a bit here because they were very dark, but I would also bring down my blacks, add a little bit, well, that's too much clarity. Vibrance for my colors. And you can go pretty far with vibrance before it starts to look weird. That looks weird but 20 or 30 with vibrance is, is not out of control. And I might actually darken my orange just a little bit and my blue, change the hue of my blue, make that bluer. Like I said, that's just, and that's just personal taste. And so when I wanna shift those colors just a little bit, I typically do it right in here. I don't like those global adjustments for that kind of thing. And what I'll probably end up doing is taking a brush and make sure that auto mask is ticked. And what I really want to do is I just want to bring out some of these 
highlights down in here, right here on this sand. And I don't need to go crazy, but I might want to saturate those just a little bit more than the rest of the image. Add a little bit of texture there and maybe brighten them up just a smidge. Okay, so here's my before and after. I think it's a better image. I think that your eye goes from here to here, back and forth, which is great. That's what I wanted to do. And I would be content with this. I would be done. Something else that could be easily overlooked uh, during photo editing is a color cast. Now this image, these boats are, they're white boats, uh, but they don't look white here. If you look really closely at them, they look kind of blue. And that is the color cast. It's the color cast from the blue sky, reflecting back down on them and making them look blue. Now what I can do is I can take the dropper and see that should be my neutral. Woo! Well, they're not blue anymore, uh, but I think it did a little bit too much in the opposite direction. So I might bring that back just a little bit and bring that back. If I go too far, we get green and there we go. If I really wanted to, cause I'm fine with that. Here's the before, very, very blue and here's after, but say I specifically wanted these to be less blue, but I didn't want to affect the sky because you notice that when I did that, it adjusted the entire image. Again, global adjustments, not a huge fan. So uh, instead of doing that, if I want the sky to look blue, I would probably select my brush and you can do this in Lightroom or in Photoshop and I would auto mask and I would just come in here and this is, you know, a little bit sloppy. So you could definitely do a better job. All right. So that is what is masked and I would simply desaturate that. There we go. Now I've got white boats. Roxanne, there's a little blue there. Like I said, I would be a little bit more specific if I was really working on this. Uh, but that is one way to remove a color cast without affecting the entire image and click done. There we go. Last thing I want to talk about is noise. Now this image is just a small portion of that beach photo that I was using earlier, but I want to show you what can happen if you simply over process an image. Uh, now this was taken at ISO 100. So that should be my cleanest, least amount of noise that I have. So let's just, let's just say we've been in here uh, processing a lot and I'm going to just do a lot of work. My shadows up and do that. Add some contrast. Oh yeah, we're getting really ugly now. Okay. <laughs> you can see what happens when you over process an image. Now, like I said, this was ISO 100. I should be able to push this image pretty far. Clearly not this far, but I want you to be aware of it. I want you to know that processing your images, even in Lightroom, you can introduce noise specifically in the dark areas. And so if I wanted to do noise reduction there, that's great and everything, but in order to get rid of it, I basically had to get rid of all of the detail as well. So be careful during your editing sessions that you are not processing to the point where you are bringing out a lot of noise. If you do push things a little bit too far, uh, noise reduction sharpening is available down here for you to essentially fix that. And there's uh, lots of third party uh, softwares that will help with noise as well. I know if you do night photography, noise can be an issue. So uh, definitely be aware of it, watch out for it, and try not to go crazy with these uh, images. One thing I make sure that I teach all my students is, you know, these sliders are all here for you, but just because you can doesn't mean you should. I hope you found this helpful. Um, came up with maybe a couple of new tips for yourself, but be careful when you're processing. We have lots of tools available for us now. We've got different softwares. You can process on your phone, your tablet. But I think my best piece of advice when it comes to editing is to always check your progress while you're editing, uh, is to zoom in to 100% at the minimum. I typically zoom into 200% just to make sure that I'm not doing anything that is creating a problem, a problem that wasn't already there. So you certainly don't want to make more work for yourself. And then something that I also do now granted in Lightroom uh, in, in camera raw and things like this that uh, do non-destructive editing, don't necessarily need to worry about it because you can always undo things and back up in your history. But I like to actually just get up, walk away from my editing session, come back in five minutes, and look at the image. And if anything pops out as too orange, too blue, too purple, too red, 
not enough detail, too much detail, not enough contrast, you know, any, any of the above, that I will fix that because coming at an image with a fresh pair of eyes makes a huge difference. When you've been working on a photo for a while and you make a small adjustment and then another small one and another small one and they add up, it's a cumulative effect. And when you go back to the original photo that you brought in, sometimes it can be unrecognizable. You go, oh, wait a minute, maybe, maybe I pushed that a little bit too far. It can be very, very easy to kind of fall into that trap where you're just doing little by little by little, but cumulatively it, it equals too much. So yeah, definitely walk away, come back, look at it with fresh eyes and whatever pops out at you as wrong or annoying or just it bothers you for whatever reason, go ahead and fix it. Most of all, have fun in your photo editing sessions. This is your time to be creative in the digital darkroom and make those images the way that you see in your mind's eye. Have a great day.